Hey guys, it's Mark from Migrant Professional. Today we are talking about what you don't know about MSG and how it relates to migraines and headaches. So it's really important to understand about MSG is that it's monosodium glutamate. Glutamate is actually a neurotransmitter in the brain used to send messages between neurons, between nerve cells. It's an excitatory ne neurotransmitter. So it excites neurons. And it's very um, excitational to the brain. But MSG, it's a form of free glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is an amino acid. So this amino acid, it's free. It's not bound to other foods. So regularly, glutamic acid exists in every food that has proteins in it but it's bound to other amino acids. In MSG, it's different. In MSG, it's free glutamic acid. It's not bound to anything. It's pure glutamic acid. So when we eat this, when we take it into our bodies, it absorbs very quickly, it enters the bloodstream very quickly, and it can enter the brain space very quickly. So we really wanna be careful with this, especially if we have a susceptibility. One of the biggest problems is that even though our body has kind of developed a, a system to keep it out, which is the blood brain barrier, we can develop what are called uh, leaky brain or leaks in that blood brain barrier. So we wanna make sure that we are addressing our blood brain barrier. We wanna make sure that we're healing those holes, that we're repairing that blood brain barrier, we're keeping our brain safe. The blood brain barrier, it's used to keep big molecules, pathogens, chemicals and anything that shouldn't be in the brain. It's there to kind of keep it out. It's like a membrane that, that keeps the brain safe. So when it gets damaged by things like stress, we start getting problems. So the biggest one is obviously stress. We want to be careful of our cortisol levels, how high our stress levels are throughout the day and how high our cortisol is because this is impacting our body's inflammation levels and how it's able to kind of compensate how it's able to repair. The next one is alcohol. Alcohol has been proven to actually create holes in the blood brain barrier and create leaky brain. So it's really important to kind of steer clear of alcohol. We all know people who drink a lot of alcohol, they lose brain cells. And this is one of the reasons why. Next one is sleep. So sleep is crucial because it's the brain's time for repair. It's the time that the brain uses to rejuvenate, and sort of recuperate from all of the stresses of the day. During sleep, the brain can actually shrink up to 20% because it's sort of the way we can think about it is that it's squeezing out all of the waste, all of the toxins, it's squeezing all of that out while we're sleeping so that it can repair and it can be ready for the next day's work. If we're not sleeping properly, it's not doing this. So it's not just about getting enough time whatever, eight to 10 hours. It's about make sure that we're getting quality sleep, that our blood sugar is balanced while we're asleep, that we properly wind down into sleep, and that we, are, we have enough nutrients so our body can create sleep hormones and repair properly during sleep. The next one is toxicity. So toxicity is basically the, the overload of chemicals. There are a number of different chemicals that can have adverse effects on the brain. We really wanna be careful of what we're putting into our bodies, whether that be through foods, through drinks, on our skin, or the things in our airspace, the things that we're breathing in. We really wanna be careful where we live, what we're putting on us. We wanna read ingredient lists. We wanna make sure that we're not putting anything sort of on our body or around our body that we wouldn't put drink and, and eat because everything enters us. Everything we put on our skin enters us. We really wanna be careful with toxicity. The next one is hypo and hyper. So hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, really wanna be careful with it because low blood sugar is one of the biggest causes of sort of instability in the body, stress to the brain, and as we know, migraines and headaches. So we, we have to make sure that this is addressed. Low blood sugar, is a massive problem and it has to be addressed. You gotta make sure that you're on a nutritional protocol to address it. You're getting enough nutrients so that your body can create the hormones to deal with sugars and that you're eating more protein and fat foods so that you're keeping your blood sugar nice and stable throughout the day. The next piece is hypertension. Hypertension is high blood pressure. We want to be really careful because if there's, let's say, so we have, um, we have our blood brain barrier and it develops a little hole. If there's a lot of tension in our blood, a lot of pressure, it's going to turn that little hole into a big one. 
So we really wanna be careful with hypertension. We, again, we wanna make sure we address this through lifestyle and through diet. This is easy, both of these are easily addressable. They wanna be the first things to go. So once we've addressed your blood-brain barrier, once we're kind of healing that blood-brain barrier, we're taking the proper steps to recover it, we wanna make sure that we are removing sources of glutamate. So glutamate, the first and most important thing to, to understand is that glutamate is, it kind of fluctuates through different times in, during your menstrual cycle. So the, the times that is at its highest is right at the end of your menstrual cycle and right at the beginning when you're bleeding. Those are the two times when it's, it's basically one time when glutamate is the highest and that's the time that we wanna be the most careful. So generally, men actually have much higher glutamate levels. So you'd think, oh, why don't men get more migraines and headaches? But men, they also have many more glutamate scavengers and glutamate transporters. And these are sort of, they take glutamate and they remove it from where it's not supposed to be. The scavengers pick it up, clean it up, clean up all the excess glutamate, and the transporters take that glutamate and put it exactly where it's supposed to be so it's not causing problems and it's not exciting cells that are sort of on the verge of fatigue. The next thing and the sort of the biggest source of glutamate and sort of free glut glutamate in the diet is processed and packaged foods. Now, again, we wanna be careful, even with migraines and headaches, we wanna be cutting out our processed and packaged foods, but glutamate and monosodium glutamate specifically is one of the most sort of mislabeled, um, I guess you can call it chemicals or foods um, on the entire of all of the foods. It can fall under 30, 40, 50 different names. So anything with, with um, flavors after it, the name flavors or proteins or um, all of these different sort of ingredients can be MSG, but they're not labeled MSG or monosodium glutamate or free glutamic acid or glutamate or glutamic acid. They're not labeled any of those. So you really wanna be careful. And the easiest way to eliminate those is to eliminate your processed and packaged foods. And again, most processed and packaged foods, they're not living foods. They don't support your health. Uh, they don't give back. So the next thing, cultured foods. Cultured, cured, fermented, smoked. Um, those are all kind of iffy. You gotta be careful with if you have migraines and headaches. So one of the reasons is because they're high in glutamate because when they're culturing or fermenting or curing or smoking, um, sort of bacteria will break down the actual, they'll, they'll break down the bonds of the proteins. They'll break them down into amino acids. They'll release that glutamic acid, turn it to free glutamic acid, and the bacteria will actually create their own glutamic acid. So you wanna be really careful with anything that's cured, cultured, fermented, smoked. But those foods, that same category of foods, is also one of the highest sources of histamines and tyramines. As we know, migraine sufferers are generally lower in diamine oxidase levels compared to healthy people. And diamine oxidase, it's used to break down histamine and tyramine. So we really wanna be careful with these foods because they're very high in histamine and tyramine. As we know with the migraine diet, these foods are generally one of the ones we cut out. The next thing, fish sauce and soy sauce, really anything with soy, kind of stay away from, be careful with, it's not a health food. And then we have our long cooked meats. So again, when you're cooking something for a long time, you're breaking down the bonds that are holding it together. You're breaking down those proteins into sort of glutamic acid, into just their amino acids like glutamic acid. And then we have your malted barley. So things like, uh, like, like what's used to make breads and beer. Uh, you have dairy casein. So that's um, sort of the, the protein that's in dairy it can be a source of glutamate. The same with the protein in wheat called gluten that can be a source of glutamate. So you wanna be careful with these. And again, most of these are actually on migraine trigger and food lists. So they should have already been removed a while ago. You really gotta be careful with dairy and wheat, especially uh, if you're getting migraines and headaches, any kind of neurological issues. So it's really important that you could kind of combine the two. You're repairing the blood-brain barrier, repairing your leaky brain, but then also at the same time, you're removing foods that have lots of glutamate, lots of free glutamate, free glutamic acid. And so the way you kind of want to do it is you first you want to start with removing your processed packaged foods, 
And then if that hasn't worked, then you want to kind of start cutting out some of the other uh, foods, like maybe tomatoes might have some extra glutamate in them, those foods, and then kind of cut them out and go from there. So let me know in the description below, is MSG a trigger for you? Have you found any specific foods that are triggers for you that have high amounts of MSG? Maybe they have lots of histamine or tyramine? Let me know in the description below. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from Migrant Professional. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner so that others can find this information as well. If you want to learn more about migraines than you've ever known before and how to deal with them, make sure to go to our website. Thanks.